So on your computer you will of course need a DVD reader drive, um, which most modern computers have. You'll also need two pieces of software. Um, these pieces of software are available for Windows, Mac OS X and Linux. So you have VLC, which is the traffic cone, that's available at www.videoland.org forward slash VLC. VLC <coughs> is basically an open source media pocket knife in that it will play pretty much anything you want. And it provides the next piece of software, Handbrake, with the DVD decryption tools that it needs to copy DVDs. So Handbrake, the next one, the one with the pineapple and the cocktail um, as its icon, is a DVD ripper. What we use it for is to copy the DVDs off into a format that we can then edit or um, archive or email to people or put on YouTube. Okay, so we're at our computer now. I'm doing this on a Mac as you can see, but it is fairly consistent for Windows. Um, I'm certainly not a Linux expert, so no idea what would happen on Linux, but I get the feeling that most people actively using Linux will know what I'm doing anyway, smart people with Linux. Okay, so the way I've set up my computer is when I insert a, a DVD, it automatically opens Handbrake, and that's what it's done here. And as you can see, we have a list of volumes here. We have Blake Hockley, Logical Volume Identifier, and Macintosh HD. In most cases, your DVD recorder will call the disc Logical Volume Identifier. If it doesn't, um, whatever CD you have installed is the same. So I'm going to click Logical Volume Identifier, and then click Open. And Handbrake then goes along and reads the disc and finds all the titles. Now on a DVD, the title refers to basically a collection of video clips. So a movie with all its chapters is a title. And Handbrake automatically picks the longest title, in this case the 32 minute title. But let's say we want to start with title 1. Now if you're thinking to yourself, oh dear, I have absolutely no idea what this clip is. You see down in the corner here, zoom in on it for you, picture settings. Now what you want to do is click picture settings and then you can see what it is. So in this case it looks like me, yeah, me destroying a computer and then playing the Nintendo Wii for example, this is from a few years back. Um, chapter 3, picture settings is my cousin's violin recital and then her 10th birthday party. Now what you want to do is if you come down here you'll see some options <clears throat> and you're probably thinking what the hell are these? I only ever bother with one of these and that's deinterlacing on fast. Now what is deinterlacing? You might have noticed sometimes when you've seen some footage maybe taken off a DVD camcorder, whenever someone moves there's these horrible lines around them, it's like they're shimmering or something. That's basically interlacing. So click fast deinterlacing and then click close. Now in terms of these settings here, I say don't bother with them. The one thing you'll want to do in, in the interest of time though is turn off two-pass encoding. Two-pass encoding with footage like this won't help. Um, it won't give you any high quality and it'll just take about 68 years to finish on most computers. So that's the settings there and you'll just want to leave those. And then you'll want somewhere to put the file. So if you click browse, you can then pick wherever you would like your file to be. So I'll make a new folder called tutorial and I'm going to call it um, Rebecca, my cousin's name, Rebecca's birthday plus recital.mp4 save. And then all you have to do is click the start button and off it goes. Now depending on what kind of computer you have and what other things you're doing on the computer at the time, It'll take varying amounts of time. At the moment I'm running um, this and I show you, which is recording my screen, on a three-year-old mid-range iMac. So 
it wouldn't usually take an hour and seven minutes just because it is doing something intensive already um, as you can see my CPU meter um, I'm predicting though um, I believe when I did this you know normally um, not for recording it took about half an hour it does depend on how much footage there is and what sort of quality you're bringing it in at so we'll stop that there and I will show you um, a clip that I ha 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 oh my god I've just realized what I get to do for the first time ever a clip that I prepared earlier <gasps> anyway you can see though that I have some clips in here and they range in size from about um, 60 megabytes to 1.09 gigabytes and again it does depend um, if you do want lower quality stuff because you don't have as much space um, and it's fairly easy to work out but if you're having problems um, do send me a YouTube message or post a video response but let's use some footage here such as Eastbourne and I'll just open this this was recorded about 11 years ago and if we hit play and as you can see basically oh yep someone's uh, I don't know who on earth that is but they really don't know how to use a camera uh, we'll skim through this and you can see it's basically old sort of family footage um, here's me as a little mite yeah. You can see it's not the world's greatest quality, but coming off an 8mm videotape, it's never going to be. But the cool thing is, of course, from there, you can do plenty of things with this footage. You can take it into iMovie or Final Cut and add some titles and things. You can convert it to another format and go from there. So we keep flicking through, and you can see it's all there. Now what I'll be doing, my reasons for this um, was <laughs> I was planning to and I'm going to release some from the archives footage which is basically me um, as a small child doing some pretty interesting things. Um, the highlights include me as a nine year old um, yelling at an Indian man and calling him a curry muncher. So good to know that I was always the Blake Cockley you guys know and I think love. But that's basically all you need to do to digitise uh, 8mm footage. So a summary, what do you need? You need the footage you'd like to digitise, you need a camera that is capable of reading that and has an output to a DVD recorder, so to RCA, you need the DVD recorder that has the inputs and you need blank discs to record onto. Once you've done that, you need a computer uh, running Windows, Linux or Mac OS X uh, with VLC and Handbrake installed. Once you've done that, uh, the choice is yours. So if you guys have got any questions about what I've covered, um, feel free to send me an email or um, drop me a YouTube comment or a video response. And keep an eye out for some of this from the archives footage. Yeah, should be quite interesting. I'm very bored at the moment, so that's sort of what I'm doing. But yeah, if you have any questions, be sure to let me know. Thanks for watching.